In this video, we take your feedback from installing Android on Windows and troubleshoot your installations. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. Our original video, installing Android on PC using VirtualBox, has proven very popular, fueled in no small part by Fortnite players looking to download the iconic skin without going to the expense of purchasing a Galaxy S10. Whilst we didn't necessarily foresee this driver of the video's popularity, it's led to our tutorial being viewed many times, and consequently provided us with a wealth of feedback from which we can troubleshoot unsuccessful installations. We remain entirely satisfied with the content of the original video, and following the steps shown in that tutorial, we'll successfully install a stock version of Android on a Windows PC running VirtualBox. For the avoidance of any doubt, this video does not walk through the steps of installing Android within Windows. For that, you should revisit our original tutorial linked in the written description accompanying this video. That tutorial also provides the context for this video, which is designed as a companion troubleshooter. We've received plenty of feedback from people who have successfully followed the steps to create a working installation. Despite this, and no matter how well we believe we've communicated the content of that tutorial, and how well you believe you may have understood it, there remains the possibility that the installation simply doesn't work for you, for a myriad of reasons, including hardware variations, changes to default settings, and simple miscommunication. We've therefore used the feedback we've received via your comments to create this video, outlining some of the common difficulties you've encountered, and the steps which will hopefully rectify them. We begin with a minor change to the download location for the Android installation ISO. Whilst the original video pointed to Android x86, this site now directs to either OSDN or FossHub, and you'll see the relevant links on screen now, as well as in the written description. Whichever site you use, you'll see a selection of files available for download. For our purposes, we can ignore the RPM files, as VirtualBox installations make use of the ISO format instead. That still leaves us a choice between ISO files, and takes us to the first major topic of the tutorial. Where the ISO file includes reference to 64 in its file name, this is an indication of a 64-bit installation ISO, with the logical conclusion that the remaining ISO is the 32-bit version. VirtualBox is capable of running both versions, but to run the more powerful 64-bit version may require you to enable virtualization in BIOS. If we are not offered 64-bit options when we configure our virtual machine, it's entirely likely that virtualization will need to be enabled, and the procedure to achieve this varies between motherboards and manufacturers. Typically, you'll need to press a key during setup in order to enter BIOS, before navigating to a setting to enable virtualization, then saving the changes and exiting, and you should consult your motherboard manual for precise instructions. Upon returning to VirtualBox, we will now have the option to install 64-bit guests. It's therefore important at the point of downloading to ensure that the ISO image we are downloading will be compatible with the virtual machine we are using. So we should download a 32-bit image for a 32-bit virtual machine, and a 64-bit ISO for a 64-bit virtual machine. If we try to install from the 64-bit ISO to a 32-bit virtual machine, this will not work, and will generate an error message. This has certainly been reflected in the feedback we've received. Possibly the most common error we've encountered is also the most straightforward to fix. If we see an error message similar to this one at startup, our machine will not progress beyond this stage, and this is a consequence of default graphics settings for the virtual machine. If we navigate to the graphics settings by right-clicking on the virtual machine, then navigating to display, then screen, we note that the default graphics controller is set to VM SVGA. In many installations, this will prevent the virtual machine from successfully booting. We therefore change the graphics controller setting to VBOX SVGA, then click OK, and rerun the virtual machine. At this stage, the VM should proceed successfully with the Android installation. As we've dealt with graphics errors, we'll also look at the common audio error. This error most typically occurs when there are audio driver problems, and it's an easy fix if this is the case. Right click on the virtual machine, then navigate to settings, then audio. If the option to enable audio is not ticked, tick it, then rerun the virtual machine. A brief overview of some other issues. One of the most frequently received comments asks if we can replicate specific hardware. Again, typically Fortnite players looking for Galaxy S10 emulation. That isn't possible using the method shown in this tutorial, and nor is it intended to be. 
This tutorial installs a stock version of Android, which differs from specific hardware implementations in three key ways. Firstly, the Android version we install is dictated by the version available for download in the form of an ISO file. So, whilst at the time of this video's publication, current flagship handsets are running Android 9. Our virtual machine can only emulate version 8.1 until an updated ISO is published. Secondly, this method installs a stock version of Android. Any manufacturer will differentiate their offering by adding custom skins, widgets, apps and features. These will be unique selling points and the intellectual property of their manufacturer. Thirdly, many hardware features cannot be directly replicated in a virtualized environment, which can hugely alter the user experience. This could be something as straightforward as exchanging a touchscreen for keyboard and mouse, but also features using camera, gyroscope, accelerometer and so forth. Taking these three factors into account, it should be apparent that this method cannot subsequently be used to mimic a specific device. That being said, this remains the closest we can presently get to specific device emulation and offers the closest approximation of the Android experience within a Windows environment. Moving on to fixing more general errors, one of the simplest methods to cure an error is simply to delete the virtual machine and restart. It may be that an incorrectly applied setting has caused a problem, and rather than trying to debug, it may be more easily rectified by starting afresh. Only in instances where the error persists and is replicated across separate installations does it become necessary to address it. It may be worth checking the integrity of your installation ISO, as an incomplete or corrupted download will fail to install correctly. Redownloading the original ISO to rule out this possibility is therefore recommended. And, whilst discussing the installation ISO, don't forget to eject it after the main installation phase to ensure that your virtual machine doesn't subsequently attempt to reboot from it when it should instead be booting from the hard drive. Remember also to be patient at startup. We typically liken this to switching on a device when powered off, taking into account the length of time a typical power on and boot up sequence would occupy. Around 2 minutes is reasonable, and don't forget to check the drive activity indicators on your virtual machine. Thereafter, we're into checking resource settings, ensuring that we allocate sufficient RAM using even multiples of 1024 megabytes to match typical handset specifications. We use 4 gigabytes at present, although we should ensure that we leave sufficient RAM to allow our physical machine to operate effectively. We also need to allow sufficient storage to install the base operating system and any apps and updates. Again, we use typical phone storage capacities to influence our thinking. Finally under settings, we always allocate the maximum video memory of 128 megabytes. We were asked how to install Google Play on our virtual machine, but we don't need to as it's installed by default. Here are the remaining apps which appear as part of the initial installation. Incidentally, logging into your Google Play account should work in exactly the same manner as it would on a physical device, and any issues you experience here are likely to be on an account level rather than resulting from use of a virtual machine. Once you log in, your existing purchases should simply be available to you. We also received a comment from a user of a hardwired network connection, concerned that their installation would fail due to the absence of hardware support for Wi-Fi. This isn't the case, however, as the virtual machine will piggyback on your existing network connection, whether wired or wireless, provided that we select the relevant bridge network options during VirtualBox installation. We cover this in more detail in our VirtualBox installation tutorial. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the TechFix Flix YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official TechFixFlix Twitter account. Until your next TechFix, goodbye.